You ready? He's ready. Good evening. We're glad that you are here. If you will get a psalm book, turn with us to page number two. We have uh, had issues with our uh, projection system there, so we'll be a little old school. We'll see if we can get that worked out in the next week or so. Maybe. Number two, we praise thee, O God. We're going to sing verses one, two, and five of this song. Sing. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May it so be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Yeah. <clears throat> the next song, number three. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. <clears throat> we'll sing first and third verse. Sing. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. From the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest. All his angels, praise proclaim. All his hosts together, praise him. Sun and moon and stars on high. Praise Him, all ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praise His gift, Jehovah, for His name alone is high, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All you fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, Creeping things and beast and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes, great earth judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Before we have our scripture reading and our opening prayer, number four. 
<clears throat> Number four. Sing verses one and two of the song. Let's sing. To God be the glory, great things He had done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Great things He had taught us, <coughs> He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Tonight's scripture reading comes from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let's go to God in prayer, please. Our Father, God in heaven, hallowed be thy name throughout heaven and earth. Father, we truly thank you for this opportunity. This truly is an opportunity to come here and worship you, the one and only living God. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. We can never thank you for everything because there's too many things to count. But we thank you, Father. And we pray, Father, that as we go into this service for you to hear your word preached to us, that we'll put the world out of our minds, listen to you on your day especially, and then take it into our hearts and then out into the world. We thank you, Father, for the facilities here that make it so easy to come here and worship you. We thank you for the ones that, that maintain that facility, this facility right here. And we thank you, Father, for all that, that your workers do here. They don't do it for praise. They don't do it for money. They don't do it for recognition. They do it because they love you. Father, we thank you for, for your son, Jesus. We sing about him, we talk about him, we pray in his name. We, Father, we thank you so much for him, realizing that with him we have the hope of heaven, but without him we are lost. Let us take that message out into the world, for that is our, our purpose here. Be with us now as we go through this time, for we pray in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our next song will be number 991. 991. This is my father's world. I'm going to sing all three verses of this song. Let's sing. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music. 
music of the spheres. This is my Father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas. His hand of wonders roll. This is my Father's words. The birds their carols raise. The morning light, the lily white, declare their Maker's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems all so strong, God is a ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be won. Amen. If you'd like to mark your books, you can do that at page 908. 908, that will be your invitation song at the close of our lesson this evening. <clears throat> if you were not here this morning, uh, Brother Russ is, is suffering from uh, an abscess tooth or something. His jaw is really swollen. He can't hardly speak, so uh, he asked Andrew to fill in for him. He did a, a fine job this morning, and he'll do the same this evening. So uh, Brother Andrew will bring us our lesson after we sing 744. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Let's stand as we sing. God's family. Let's sing. We're part of the family that's been born again. Part of the family whose love knows no end. For Jesus has saved his own now we're part of the family that's on its way home and sometimes we laugh together sometimes we cry sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. God's family and though some go before us we'll all meet again just inside the city as we enter in there'll be no more parting with Jesus we'll be together forever God's family and sometimes we laugh together sometimes we cry sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs 
Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. God's family. Good evening. It's certainly good to see all of you here. There's the mic. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn with me to Ecclesiastes um, chapter 12. That's where I'll start off this evening. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and then chapter 12. I was kind of fast this morning with my scripture, so I'll take some time for us to all turn there. Um, this morning I used the word lit as teenagers referring to being cool and truly confronted me with that and said that's not what we use nowadays. So it's, there's a different uh, word for cool for teenagers nowadays, okay? I want to ask the question, are you happy? I'm talking about happiness in the Lord. I don't know of any person on this earth who would want to experience true happiness. Some seem to think they can find happiness in the things of this world. Solomon certainly thought he could for a while, didn't he? He had everything a worldly person would want. He had plenty of wine, women, money. He had all kinds of wisdom, and he had fame and power. But as Solomon reflected upon all of these things, he realized there wasn't any true happiness in these material worldly things. In fact, he got bored with what he had. That is why he said in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9, What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Solomon came to the realization of what really matters in life and what can bring about true happiness. As we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, let us hear the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. And you see, true happiness can only be found in the Lord. And of course, we learn about how to be happy by looking to Scripture, to God's Word. Solomon also points this out in a couple of his Proverbs as well. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, it says there where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. In Proverbs 16, 20, he who heeds the Word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy happy is he when a person gets to the point in their life where they can trust the lord in the lord it is at that point they can know without a doubt that if they keep his commandments they can have the confidence that they will have something to look forward to beyond this meager existence and this should bring out true happiness in a person's life let's take a look at several reasons of why every christian should be able to find happiness in the lord First of all, we should be happy in the fact that we know there is a God and that Jesus is their Savior. Could you imagine going through life not knowing about Jesus? Think about how sad life would be, thinking that all you have in this short time we have on this earth, we should also be happy that we live in a free country to where it is possible for us to gather here in peace and share the gospel, the knowledge of Christ. Think about how sad it is for those who are in the world who are cut off from the Word of God, who desperately need to hear the saving message of the gospel. You see, we should have great joy in our life, knowing that we have God that loves and cares for us and is always there for us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, read a while ago, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In verse 6, so we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Now think about how happy this should make us as Christians, knowing that God loves us so much that He will never forsake us. This is why so many Christians are happy and blessed, because they know the Lord and they trust in Him with all their heart, mind, and soul. We also learn that God doesn't miss any of the details in our lives, as David expresses in Psalms chapter 139, For the chief musician, a psalm of David, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down, my rising up, you understand my thoughts. 
thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. In verse 11, if I say, Surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both light to you. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So not only should we be happy in the Lord because we know Him, but we should be happy that He knows us so well and that He is willing to care for each and every one of us. In Luke chapter 12, verse 7, it says there, the very hairs on our head are numbered. Paul certainly conveyed his confidence in the Lord. And care in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. You see, Paul didn't worry about his situation there. He had learned from the Lord to be content where he was. No matter how much suffering or obstacles came his way, he could rejoice and find happiness in the Lord. He knew the Lord and trusted in His promises. And in the same way, we can find happiness in the Lord. The second way we can find happiness in the Lord is in the fact that we can pray to God. And have the confidence that He will do what is best for our problems. Again, I ask, imagine not having access to God through prayer. It would certainly be very sad to me to know that all I could do is learn about God, but yet never talk to Him. It would also cast a great shadow of doubt on the love of God if He wasn't willing to listen to me. But fortunately for us, we all have access to God through prayer, thanks to Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 4, and verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are. Yet, without sin, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It is awesome to be able to speak to God through prayer and turn all your problems and worries over to Him. Knowing that He will make things work out for the best, as Paul says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. You see, God always has our best interests at heart. And it should make us very happy to know that we don't neglect prayer in our life. As Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. If you find that you don't have happiness in your life, perhaps your prayer life is not what it should be. Now the third thing that should make us happy is studying the Word of God. There are many today who hardly ever open their Bibles unless they are at church. And I can tell you, if this describes you, you are missing out on another great source of happiness. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This word blessed can also be defined as happiness. I can tell you there is a great joy in trying to learn as much as you can about God and living the righteous life. And the way you can do this is by studying your Bibles, because it contains everything we need to know that is pleasing to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. In 2 Peter 1 3, his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. 
I can promise you one thing. You can never exhaust the Bible because there is always something new to learn. And not is there the great happiness in learning more about God. There is great happiness about learning more about God. The more we read and study those verses that talk about how much God loves us and how much He is involved in our lives, the easier it will be for us to find ways to rejoice in the Lord, no matter the circumstances in our lives. Listen to these scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There is great need to know the Word, because without knowing the Word, how can we know how to be pleasing to God, or how to tell others about Him? In 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. How can you defend your belief if you don't know what the Bible says? In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 22, And whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. How can we possibly know the commandments of God if we never studied them? How can we have confidence that our prayers are being answered if we don't ever study Scripture? How can we know that we are worshiping God in spirit and in truth if we don't know our Scripture? We cannot. If more and more people continue to neglect the Word of God, the church as we know will no longer exist, and true happiness will be gone. I am reminded of the words of Hosea in chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. We certainly have many examples of those that we should follow after when it comes to knowing Scripture. For instance, note Job says in Job 23, 12, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job considered the Word of God more important than his necessary food. However, However, many today had this backwards, don't we? Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 says, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. You see there, he understood that the Word of God brought joy to his life. And if we would only make the time to allow God's Word be poured into our hearts on a daily basis, we could express the feeling that Jeremiah had. Finally, I want to share with you what David said in this topic in Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight Light is in the law of the Lord, and His law He meditates day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever He does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So please don't neglect the Word of God, and you will be glad that you didn't, because it will bring great happiness into your life. The fourth thing that can bring us happiness in the Lord is by serving Him. And knowing that we are bringing Him glory by what we do. We can certainly see this from the first century apostle as they were arrested for a second time for preaching in the name of Jesus. Now the opposing Jews would have loved to have killed them, but Gamaliel gave them the advice to leave them alone at this time. And we pick up on this story in Acts chapter 5 and verse 40. It says, And they agreed with Him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. In verse 42, And daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. You see, it brought them great joy, knowing that they were doing the will of God, even though they were beaten for it. 
Don't you think that we should have a great joy in doing things that God has asked us to do? Your answer should be yes. However, some Christians don't look at serving God as happy times. Instead, look at it as being a grudging responsibility, and so many simply avoid serving God. Friends, if this is your attitude about serving God, you are looking at it the wrong way. Because when you start thinking about everything God has done for us and everything that He has promised us, it should make you desire to want to do things for the Lord. Although we can never earn our salvation, we can certainly do our best to bring glory and honor to the Lord. It doesn't matter how you are treated when serving God, because no matter what the result is, you will be blessed in what you do. As Jesus said in Matthew 5.10, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So as you can see, there are many reasons of why we should be able to find happiness in serving the Lord. Now our final reason tonight of why we can find true happiness in the Lord is that we have the forgiveness of our sins and the promises that go along with this. Romans chapter 4 verse 7, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Well, y'all know that sin separates us from God. And to have that sin removed and for it to no longer have power over us is certainly something worth being happy about. We can see this action where Philip chases down the Ethiopian eunuch and teaches him about Christ in Acts 8.35. It says, Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the unit went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way, what? Rejoicing. Here we clearly see that once the unit accepted the gospel call, he was baptized and his sins were forgiven and he rejoiced about this. Friends, the next time you start feeling sad or you start feeling like everyone is out to get you, remind yourself of how you obeyed the gospel call and you were baptized in the Christ for the mission of sins. Think about what it means because when you do, it should be enough to make you happy instead of sad or defeated. And of course, the ultimate happiness will come to us when we remain faithful to God until the day we die, as John says in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. It says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. When we die in the Lord, we will have much to be happy about. And those who love us will certainly miss us, but they will be happy for us because they know that we will be with Christ. We can certainly see that Paul was happy with his salvation at the end of his life, don't we, in 2 Timothy, where he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. With that being said, I hope this lesson tonight has been encouraging to you and has helped remind you of just how much of true happiness there is in the Lord. From our lesson, we learn there is happiness in knowing the Lord and being known by the Lord, knowing that we can pray to God and that He will take care of us, studying God's Word, which teaches us everything we need to know about God and His happiness, serving the Lord with whole hearts, mind and soul, and having the forgiveness of sins and the hope of heaven. If you have found that you are not happy in your Christianity, why don't you reflect upon these things I have shared with you? And if you do, I feel confident that you will once again find true happiness that can only be found in Jesus. Remember, Jesus has the victory. All we have to do is follow. Tonight you must hear the Word of God, believe it, and be repentful. Confess that He is the Son of God and be baptized for the mission of sin. So I hope you would do that tonight. And if you'd like to ask for forgiveness, we offer that as well as we stand and as we sing. There's a stranger
and loving Heavenly Father, so again we thank you for an opportunity to gather around your table. At this time we want to offer thanks for the bread to which us as Christians is a reminder of the body of Christ as you hang upon the cross for each and every one of us. We ask that you be with these and protect this this evening. They can do so in a manner pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name, Amen. Heavenly Father, for the cup, the fruit of the vine, to which us as Christians serves as a reminder of the blood that was shed there upon the cross for each and every one of us. Again, we ask you to be with these and protect this. They can do so in a manner pleasing to you. In Christ's name, amen. It's been a, a very good day. We had some good rain this morning. We got to uh, hear that on the roof a little bit while our morning service is going on. And then it kind of rained out pretty good this afternoon. But uh, again, remember uh, Brother Russ in your prayers. He'll go to a doctor and see what he can get done about that this week, I'm sure, and, and be back with us. Remember all of those that's on our prayer list. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for, for filling in for us. We appreciate that. Have a short notice and very well done. Very good lesson this morning. If you weren't here this morning, go back and, and watch that one online and listen to that. Very good lesson this morning. Anything else we need to talk about before we dismiss this evening? Yes. Okay. Carolyn Croft, if you would, please remember her in your prayers. She's not doing good at all. So please, this, this family needs your prayers at this time, if you would. And this is a friend of Louise's mom, so uh, please remember her. Uh, you may know, uh, is it Tammy Womack? Tammy Womack, a lot of you may know her. She's from the Sylvania area, so uh, please, that's her mom. If you'd remember her, I'd appreciate that. Closing song, 738, 738. Take the name of Jesus with you. Amen.
We talk about witnessing this morning. That's what we're talking about. Seven thirty-eight. We'll sing one verse. If you can stand, and after we'll, after this, we'll be dismissed. Let's sing. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where'er you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy. Father in heaven, thank you for blessing us with this beautiful first day of the week where we have the opportunity to come together and worship you. We are thankful to be in a country that allows this freedom where we are able to worship without the fear of persecution, Lord. Thank you for the men and women of our armed forces that protect and preserve these freedoms. And thank you for the leaders of our government. And we ask you to be with them and lead them to make decisions that are pleasing to you, Lord. We also want to thank you for our church and our congregation and ask that you be with us and allow us to take the lessons we learned here today and spread your word and influence those we come into contact with. As we learn today, uh, please allow us to be happy in our faith and, think, and seek the happiness that uh, comes from your word. Lord, please be with the sick and shut-ins, and we ask you to be with them and help them to heal and recover. Thank you for your son and his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. Helps us stay strong in our faith. And please guide, guard, and direct us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen.